So now we're going to talk about bassoon reeds. Bassoon reeds are my area of expertise. I'm a bassoonist and a reed maker. And this is an example of a reed that, that I would sell to students and, and amateur bassoonists. If you're buying reeds, a couple of things that you want to look out for. Go to the store and you want to try and pick them out by hand if possible. Or better yet, you've got a local professional musician that can, can make reeds for you. This is the same for oboe. And what we want to do is we want to look at our reeds. So the first thing I'm looking for is I want to make sure that the, the wires are relatively tight. Even a reed that has been sitting on a, a store shelf for a while should be relatively consistent. It might not be as snug as this. I've had this reed in the water for a couple minutes and so it is swelled up and it's, it's basically swelled to that point where the reed and the wire make contact. Um, what we want to ensure is that uh, the wires can't fall. And so if you take the reed out of its container and this first wire has dropped all the way down to this second wire, I wouldn't, I wouldn't purchase it. It needs a fairly um, significant amount of work to get it to that place where you can use it. And I would question its quality if, if that wire has dropped that far. So we're looking for snugness and firmness in wires. We can use our thumb just to run across the grain. So when I go from side of the tip to side of the tip, I'm using my thumb to feel, and I can feel that this is relatively smooth. Could I polish a little bit more with my sandpaper? Of course I can. Um, use your eye. We want to look for any bumps or ridges. We want to make sure that it's relatively symmetrical and that we don't have any gouges in the, the face of this reed. And uh, I can't really see any here. There are some natural ones that happen with the, the machines that I use, but that's, that's part of the process. The next thing we want to do is we want to look at the tip. If I use gentle finger pressure, I should be able to see that this closes relatively symmetrically. It starts its closure at the edges and then works towards the center. And both sides of my cane are the same thickness. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the sound that the reed can make next. So once our reed has been completely soaked, and I recommend using a large enough container that the whole reed can get wet. And as I've re pre soaked this, I don't need to put it in there for very long, but the whole thing needs to be adequately hydrated. Uh, use your thumb and your finger to wipe off any excess moisture if you want. This is also a great way to kind of clean your reed. And you can just use a little bit of clean water in your thumb and your finger to, to wipe off any kind of debris that might be on the reed. Okay, I can look inside. I can see if there's any fuzz or bits of lunch in there. We definitely don't want that. We want to make sure we've brushed our teeth, cleaned out our mouth before we start to play. But I'm aiming for a pitch um, and a specific sound. So here's the sound that I'm looking for. We call that the crow. The crow is a complex sound of variable pitches. And the one that we want to try and highlight that high F sharp, it can range anywhere from an F to a G, but F sharp is right in the middle of the road. It's going to ensure that, that the reed is playing in tune with good embouchure support. I should have a reed that's, that's relatively consistent. Um, that's when I place my embouchure close to this wire. I, I take in as much read as I can. I'm really trying to isolate just this spe spe specific sound. That's the sound that it's going to make when I'm playing pianissimo. But this sound sounds awful, but it's exactly what we're looking for. That's what we call the crow. That's the combination of three parts of the read. The tip, the heart or the middle, and the back all vibrating in in similar kind of fashion and um, when we have that complex sound that gives us the complex character of the bassoon um, tone. I don't have an oboe reed with me but you can you can practice um, with your oboe reeds trying to get those multiple pitches. We're aiming for two pitches on our oboe reed, two C's that are vibrating in kind of octaves with each other 
And then if you do that same sort of thing where you use gentle lip pressure and try and use as much of the reed as possible, almost like where your lips are touching where the thread is, um, um, where the, where the, sorry, where the, uh, the thread and the, um, the bark meet, we can get one single pitch. We call that the peep and that's a, a high C in that range. If you've got a reed that can do that, then you're going to be off to a good start. If your reed doesn't do that, try and use more air pressure if it's flat. If it's sharp, you need to open up, put more oral space in your, or space between your teeth and your oral cavity, and try and encourage that full, rich, resonant sound. Use your eye, use your ear, and you can make some good judgments about choosing some reeds. Last thing we want to talk about is reed storage for both oboe and bassoon. We want to invest in a quality reed case. This is a standard 10 reed case for bassoon. There are ventilation holes on the side. You put your reeds in there. They've been played. They're wet. Air is allow allowed to circulate around them. They dry out. They don't grow any mold. These containers, these vials that your bassoon or oboe reeds come in, they're not intended for you to store your reeds in once you've started playing. They are airtight. As soon as you put your wet reed in there, mold is gonna grow, and that's bad news. So say no to mold. <laughs>